Recording in progress. Hello, everybody, and welcome in. We are now live on Facebook and in Zoom, and we are so happy to be with you tonight. I see that we have our lovely co-hostess, Michelle, in the house. Hi, Michelle. How are you? Hey, guys. Good evening. We're so excited for a new um, three-day class to get started, and then hopefully the 30-day pretty soon right after that, but lots of learning to be done tonight. Loving your shirt, by the way, um, heart themed. So <laughs> thank you for representing. Um, so guys, you're going to get to see more of Michelle later in the challenge. She's going to be doing a game for us, kind of a wrap up on day three to test all the things we've learned. So that's going to be really exciting. She also, in case you haven't ever seen her before, she has heart voices, which I'm going to talk about a little bit tonight that are just can't miss. I mean, they are an experience. So if you've seen Michelle's heart voices type in the chat, they're so great and she makes learning fun. So we're really happy to have you here tonight, Michelle. And everybody else who's here, let's just say hello. We've got Matt in the house. He's also one of our coaches. We have KJ in the house. Um, awesome KJ, one of our 30 day EKG members. We have Nuria, awesome. Welcome in, Kasim, Jeannie, Jasmine. Fahad, Don, C, Carrie, Carlene, Anna, Alice, nice to see you here on Zoom. Uh, Fahid says, good morning. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'm going to pull up my slides and we're going to get rocking here. So um, in the meantime, if you could type in the chat, where, I'm curious, where are you streaming from? So where are you streaming from? Iowa, okay. Excellent. Did everybody enjoy the eclipse today? Did anybody get to see the full eclipse? Florida, Pakistan, okay. California, yay. Washington, perfect. Um, and hey, if you're on Facebook, also let us know in the chat where you are coming from. Okay, awesome. Alabama, Turkey. Wow, we have lots of people all over the world. This is great. Alberta, Canada, Massachusetts. Okay, so let's get kicked off with this class. So welcome in officially to our three-day EKG challenge. My name is Jen Carlquist, and in case we haven't met before, I'm so honored uh, to be able to lead this class for you tonight and the next two nights. And I'm even more honored to have Michelle at my side uh, because she is somebody who you will find that you can lean on that is uh, a great cheerleader, especially if you're new. So uh, please don't be shy um, about asking questions. We're all here to support you. So um, I'll tell you a little bit more about me, but I'm glad to see that we have some more North Carolina and M Michelle says, tell us what you do as well. I like that. And the eclipse was gorgeous, Jules says. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, oh, I can. I think I. if you put in the chat, you can put everyone, Michelle, and that, that helps. All right, so the three-day EKG challenge, what are we doing here anyway? Well, it turns out that, I'll get back to that in a second. Let me tell you what we're gonna do here, and then I'm gonna tell you about this cool thing we have going on. So in this challenge, we aim in these three nights to help you get confident and comfortable with EKGs. I'm gonna plug in my microphone. Can you hear me, hear me Michelle? Yeah, okay, good. It's a little clearer when I use this microphone, but our goal is to give you some strong foundations because I kind of had this epiphany today of you know, really learning this. And I kind of thought back to the days when I was learning this and what I wish people would have told me. So I built some slides in about that that I'm gonna share with you, but essentially this is hard stuff. So you can just look around, right? And see how many people are here and realize that it's not just you that thinks this is hard, okay? This is difficult, but we're gonna start with the baby steps in this challenge and hope to kind of elevate your confidence by the end and show you a different path, that it doesn't have to be hard, that it doesn't have to be frustrating and that there is people out there who are willing to take you under their wing without hazing you, right? So hopefully you'll get to enjoy the benefit of that these three days if you hang in there with us. And so we're excited about that. What are we gonna do? Well, tonight we're gonna focus on the very basic fundamentals, like what is an EKG? Then we're gonna talk about tomorrow arrhythmias. And then on day three, we're gonna talk more about 12 leads and we'll do a little bit of practice. Um, we have a workbook, by the way, and you can get that workbook 
sent right to Messenger by clicking on a special link. Um, Michelle, are you able to, or Ruben, can you post that link for us? We also have Ruben here with us, who is our trusty assistant, and he is uh, my right hand, and he's also in the chat, both Facebook and Zoom, if you have any questions. But uh, if either Michelle or Ruben can post a link, just in case you still need the workbook, we will be using it all three nights. Um, and so that's what we're kind of going to cover. Now, getting back to this scholarship, I want to talk about this real quick because Michelle just talked about the 30-day EKG challenge. Yes, KJ. Yes, Matt. Um, this is, there's this program we do that starts next week. It's kind of like a continuation of this. If you love this, then you sign up for that. But what we're going to do, we do this every time, is we're going to give a scholarship away to one person to be in with us for a month. So I'm telling you this really early on, not as like a spoiler alert, but more as to motivate you to do what I'm going to ask you to do. So this is my dad. Uh, he has passed and this scholarship is given in his name. And to honor him, I want to pick somebody who displays helpfulness and positiveness to the fellow students in this challenge. So what does that look like specifically? Okay, so because you, you really want to win this, trust me, and I'll tell you more about it later, but you want to win this. So what does that look like? If someone's looking for the Zoom, you have the Zoom and you get it to them. If someone's struggling with, I can't find this, help them out. If they're if they're guessing on an answer that I ask you, be like, hey, good job being brave to guess. Like really create, help me create an environment where we cheer each other on. That's what I'm looking for. The person who does that the best and the most is going to win the scholarship. So I'll announce that on day three. Anyway, I wanted to just kind of get that out of the way. And it's going to be hard to beat KJ. KJ um, is very helpful. So that's that's your person to beat. I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, KJ is the one to watch. So let's also talk about you, okay? Because you are the reasons that we are here. There's lots of you. There's EKG techs. There's students. There's nurse practitioners and PAs. There's RNs. There's LVNs, there's EMS. And so we're super excited, no matter where you are on the spectrum of healthcare, that you took the time to be here with us tonight. And we're super grateful because we're gonna make this a guarantee worth your time. And I wanna just reflect for a second going back. PA, all right, RN, nice. So I wanna reflect a second. And this is a fun little thing for me to share with you guys, this picture here, because this was a long time ago. This was in 1990. I think um, six, I think. And this was me, new paramedic and uh, scared, really scared. This was my very sweet EMT partner um, who was the wind underneath my wings when I needed it, um, but he didn't know the answer. So it was all on me. And I realized that day standing there with him that I was treading water and feeling like an imposter. And I know that a lot of you feel that way too. And because of that, I just want to honor that for a minute, that it's okay to feel like an imposter while you're learning this because there's a lot to learn. And here's, here's a flash forward now. So that was 1996. It's 2024 now. So um, what have I learned? Well, you know what? <laughs> here's, here's the thing. I've learned that I'm still learning new things about EKGs still all this time, but that's what's also exciting. So just, I don't want you guys to think that A, you're going to get everything you need in this three days. And I don't want you to think B, that you'll get it all in like maybe even the next year. It takes time. It takes practice. And there's new things always evolving. For example, 2022, November 15th, there was a new article that they released where they said, hey, there are some new semi-equivalents. And it was published in the Journal of American College Cardiology. And they now have some EKG findings that need to go to the ER that we didn't really know about before. So because this isn't an advanced class, I won't go over it, but one of the things is a hyperacute T wave, okay? That is something that has never been on the radar before. So there's like in the past two years, a paradigm shift on how we even look at EKGs. So even if you knew all the things, you still have to like stay current. So anyway, just know that we're going to give you some basics. Oh, David's here. Oh my gosh, David is here. David is our EKG Mandalorian and he knows all the things, okay? He actually teaches every 
other week in our three day EKG challenge or our 30 day. And he does something called study hall. And he takes our EKGs that we send in and he breaks them down. It's phenomenal. So if you, if you do join our 30 day, you will have access to, I think the smartest mind in the EKG world. And I'll say that without any hesitation whatsoever. I hope he's not listening because he gets embarrassed when I say that, but just know that, know that there is hope. You can go from scared to confident. It just takes the right person or people or team showing you. It takes the right system and it, it really takes practice uh, really. And so we'll talk about that. Um, oh, awesome. Yay. This is awesome. I'm loving all this chat in here. New APR and yay. All right. So anyway, uh, I like to share the humility, but I also like to share that, yeah, you know, I'm now lecturing nationally on EKGs. I do for the past 16 years, I've worked in an emergency room and I also work in cardiology and it's from all these things that I've gained the ability to look back and go, oh, you know, if I just want to learn it this way, I, I have to tell you that I had an awful experience in paramedic school learning EKGs. And I'm um, sorry, David, I, 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 I'm I sorry. I was hoping you weren't listening for that part. Anyway, um, I had a horrible time. I sat next to this guy. He had like these long sideburns and I called him Elvis behind his back. He didn't know that. And the, the nurse that was teaching our class, she would put up an EKG and Elvis would raise his hand up really high, like the second the EKG went up. And he'd rattle off at least five things. And I would glare at him. I did. I, I, I was in the back. I was a back row girl. Okay. Cause I was like hoping I would never get called on. And every other class, I was always front row girl. Right. But I hated EKGs. They were so hard. And Elvis got, so finally I realized, well, I'm still trying to find a P wave and Elvis already sees all the things. How the heck is he doing it? Well, it turns out it's pattern recognition. And so David teaches that he looks at EKGs and they're like faces. And so it does actually get to be that way where you'll see it and you'll just be like, oh yeah, that's LVH. Oh yeah, that's a STEMI. But you need the building blocks first to do that, but it does come. And people would tell me all the time, oh, the light bulb will go off, Jen, it'll happen. And I was so mad when they'd say that because that would just frustrate me even more because I'd pull out that orange book, Dubin's, and you either like it or you hate it. Type in the chat if you like it or hate it. I don't care either way, but personally, it wasn't for me. I'm not someone that learns well from books. I need to hear, I need to see, I need someone to show me, like, I want to watch you do it. I want to watch over your shoulder. I want you to talk to me about it, but I'm not good at reading. Like, it's just not for me. And this is a very complex topic, right? And of course they start out with axis, which in my school, I was like, are you kidding me? And when I look back now, I never teach axis first. In fact, axis isn't even really that important in the grand scheme of things, which I talked more about in our 30 day, but just know that you can get this. It can happen. If it happened for me, the back row girl, right? Then it can happen for you guys. And I need visuals. I can't learn by myself. Don says, agree. That was me too. So visuals are helpful. Um, I don't know why I left this in here. This was in from our last slideshow. I had just gotten back from painting for this, uh, this heart. Um, I, I'm a painter. I paint hearts. Um, I, I think I was just telling you more about me. Anyway, let's talk about the class and the system. Yes, um, you will get a lot of encouragement for sure in this class. You, you will, for sure. Um, so here's how I think if I could go back to my um, my old self and if I could teach myself all over again, what would I do? How would I go about finding my way? How would I, how would I structure it? So I would start with what's an EKG. So we're gonna talk about that tonight. And then what can it tell you? Because believe it or not, and, and honestly, if you're David reading an EKG, you could tell so much more, right? But um, he's at an advanced level, but even at a basic level, you can see if the chambers are enlarged, you can see if electrolytes are off, you can see if the circulation is bad, you can see if there's a conduction issue. So there's a lot of things you can see, but even see if there's fluid in the sac that's blocking the signal coming up to the chest, a pericardial effusion. You can see all of this on an EKG if you know what to look for. So we're also gonna talk about the waves and what they should look like, the heart anatomy and how it corresponds to an EKG, the four parts of the heart. I'm gonna talk about that and specifically kind of connect the dots for you there. I'm gonna give you a little speech you can share with your patients if you ever need it, you can steal it from me. And then we're gonna talk about tomorrow rhythms. 
And we're going to do a pretty extensive rhythm review. So tomorrow night's going to be super fun. What a normal EKG looks like, we'll do that on night three. We'll talk about a 10-step approach on night three. And then 10 through 15 is kind of what we do in our 30-day EKG challenge. So we get you started with some basics. Then we jump over to the 30-day. Um, it starts on Monday the 15th. And we teach you the rest if you want to learn it. So um, that's kind of the pathway. And this is just another visual way of looking at it, right? Learn the basics. What's normal? What do 12 leads look at? What's the anatomy and how do they fit together? What are the high risk patterns? And there's a lot of them, a lot of new ones. Well, they have new names. Um, STEMI, you absolutely have to know that. Subtle STEMI. There's a new term called OMI which is occlusion MI, which is part of the paradigm shift, but I'm not going to dive into that. STEMI mimics, and then of course that leads to confidence. So really you, you have to start here. This is where we are. And this is why we're really super glad that you're here. And yes, KJ, there's a ton of visuals. Okay, so we're going to start off with this. And David said, all the coaches understand this is a tough subject. Most of us were never taught all the things. This group is essentially an EKG support group. That's so true. And even Michelle says, it's the reason I've taught 12 leads. No one taught me over the years and she worked in CV ICU. So that's a place you really need to know EKGs. That's that's a perfect description though. I mean, really an EKG support, right? And KJ seconds that. So anyway, we're here for you. We got your back 100%. So let's, I threw this in not to, to throw you in the deep end or anything, but I just wanted to give you a sort of jumping off point that this EKG here, um, I'm not going to, to, you know, I'm not going to carve it up here and, and tell you all the things, but I'm going to tell you that this person had a cardiac arrest like five minutes after this EKG. And if you were looking at this and not seeing the clues that that was about to happen, then this is the right place for you to be. But maybe you're more of an advanced student. And if you are, maybe you noticed that they a oh, cardiac nerd support group. <laughs> yeah, but being a nerd is good in this in this case. Um, maybe you, if you're more advanced, you notice these inverted symmetric T waves and that concerned you. Or maybe you notice this biphasic T over here. Or maybe you noticed these inverted symmetrics over here. Or maybe you notice the T waves are upright in V1 and AVR, right? So there's a lot of clues here, but again, we're, we're starting with scratch, but it's really with EKGs, the devil's in the details. You really, really need to know these details. And even if something kind of looks just a little bit bad, it can be very bad. And that's where we strive to get you to be able to read an EKG like this. But we, again, we start with the basics. So I, this is my epiphany I was telling you about earlier, how I realized that this, this machine, okay, so let's just talk about like the 10,000 foot view of EKGs, okay? So this machine allows us the heart to talk to us, okay? And it sends electrical signals to the EKG paper for us to read. So it's kind of like, we have to learn another language. And not only is there the EKG terminology language, but we have to learn what the heart's saying. You know, it's almost like it's sending us a Morse code and we're recording it and we have to figure it out. But, you know, we... The machine software, at least now, it doesn't do a good job of interpreting it. So we, that's us down here, we need to figure out who's running the heart. We'll talk more about that tomorrow, who's running the heart, when we talk about arrhythmias, but we always want the sinus node to run the heart. So we're going to look for P waves. And that's one of the ways we know, okay, who's in charge, right? Oh, the sinus is in charge. And then what I really think is true is that we've got some, some minions in there that are reading, that are putting out these reports, right? The, the EKG interpretation. Um, this is who's reading the, the machine. So like, do you really want these guys reading your, I mean, actually it's correct in this, in this case, but um, a lot of times, and in fact, six to 42% of the time, this is not correct. Okay. What it spits out here. So um, know that you really have to know how to read these. You can't just rely on the machine software. So we are essentially an interpreter, right? This is the interpreter here. This is us interpreting. We bridge that gap. We do the interpreting for ourselves for the EKG. We don't believe the minions because they are not getting it right. We can't afford to have a 42% miss rate. 
So going again, along with our 10,000 foot view, we also have to understand that the heart is like a house. So the heart has, and I'm going to, let me just back up. So when I work in cardiology and I have a patient, let's say come in for chest pain and palpitations, it's an everyday thing. So I'm going to have to do a bunch of things, right? Their chest pain, they need an EKG. They need a stress test, um, possibly an echo, especially if I hear a murmur and palpitations, I'm going to have to do a Holter monitor. So that's four tests per patient. So you can imagine being a patient getting four tests that they're like, well, why do I need four tests if I have one heart? Why can't you just see what you need to see? Well, that makes perfect sense, but it means that you have to give them the speech so they understand the basics of what you're looking at and how you can see them. So for example, the plumbing of a house is the vessel. So I say, well, I need the stress test to look at your plumbing and the EKG to look at your electricity and Holter monitor to see the conduction of the heart, right? To see what's happening. The walls I'm gonna look at with an echocardiogram. I can't see those any other way, I need the echo. And I also am gonna see the doors of your house, whether they open or shut well, aortic regurgitation or mitral stenosis, right? Open or close well, I'm looking at that with an echo. So I actually need all the tests. And then they're like, okay, I understand now. But it sometimes takes a little bit of education on that topic. The other thing that is important to understand is that when the heart is talking to us, one of the things it will do also is it will tell us how strong it is or if it's been beaten up by blood pressure or if there's something in the way. So what we're actually measuring is the voltage that it's putting out, the, especially the ventricle, we're measuring the voltage. So you'll often hear the term left ventricular hypertrophy. That's how thick the ventricle is. And however strong it is or however thickened it is, the more R wave you'll see. If there's something in the way, the R wave will be smaller. Okay, so that's just a concept check. And this is an example of what we're talking about here. So you can see that these R waves here are very small. And that brings me to a way to remember something very important. In our EKG world, this is essentially the P wave, okay? The first wave we should see. The P wave is the mom. The QRS is the dad. The T wave is the baby. And in that analogy, I always like to think of like the Simpsons as a stereotypical family, right? So um, Marge, but we would not count her hair as height, okay? She would get a haircut or not put it up. Um, and Homer would be taller than her. And Bart, let's just say it's Bart. Bart would be small and Bart wouldn't be running away from Homer to the next mom, okay? So that would be ideal. And you should never have a scenario like this where there's just kind of a flat channel here. This is not good. This is a bunch of low voltage, okay? So this is a heart that's suffering. And this was somebody who had a pericardial effusion. It was pretty significant. It was moderate. And so this patient had shortness of breath for a very long time. And this was a more of a chronic buildup of fluid, but progressively got worse and was written off. Oh, you're just anxious. Oh, you're just overweight oh, you're just blah, 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 but the voltage really matters. And so that's a great example. You can even see the machine said low voltage here, which is great because it normally um, won't always say that. So you do need to actually look at the voltage yourself, okay? And you can see with your naked eye, that's there's something very not right. Now, let's talk about the waves, what's making the waves. I'm gonna do a little quick um, graph for you here. And you can see that this is this SA node. Let me actually make that bigger. This is the SA node here. Wow, my drawing skills are great. Down to the AV node here. And then the impulse will go down the same time the bundles, okay? Same time. And it'll squeeze the ventricles. And so what happens sometimes is you can have one of the bundles be blocked and then you can get a bundle branch block um, and it'll make the QRS wide. So that's not what ideal, but anytime your QRS is more than three small boxes, we get worried about things like that. So that's just a really quick layout of the waves. And then talking about the waves, maybe you guys can help me sort out what these waves are. So type in the chat. Let me make sure I have my chat open. 
So what is this wave right here? What is this one called? Nice, KJ's the fastest typist. This is the P wave, very good. And good job, Anna. And this one is the, this is the what wave? Q, good job. <laughs> this one is the R wave, awesome. This one is the, this one is the S wave, good. And this one is, look at you guys. Okay, T wave. And then lastly, this is the U wave. All right, for bonus points, for bonus points. What can cause a U wave? Does anybody know? Because that's not supposed to be there. That is not supposed to be there, but you guys got them all right. Yes, good. Low hypocalcemia and potentially hypokalemia. Good job, you guys. So let's talk about rules. Rules are important. And, you know, the P wave shouldn't be needy, meaning it shouldn't be too close to the QRS. It should be smooth and not notched. The QRS shouldn't be too tall or small. The T wave should be upright and not pointy. Um, and then this is a U wave over here. We shouldn't have that. Okay, so that's kind of the rules. The T wave should also be upright in most of the leads. There's two leads where it should not be upright. Just two. Does anybody want to take a stab at what they are? Type in the chat. Be brave. In the meantime, just revisiting that this is what a P wave looks like. It should not have a notch. It should not be too big. And yes, as KJ said, and Matt, that the T wave should be inverted or upside down in AVR and V1. Perfect. Okay, so the sinus node is... Um, firing, showing you a P wave. This is what we always want to see. Now the QRS is the next part and it should be less than three small boxes or less than 120 milliseconds. That's very important. If it's wider, we worry about bundle branch blocks. And then you've got this beautiful T wave. And you know, it's important because the T wave, actually the T wave is me and David's favorite wave because so much info is here. But essentially there's also... Um, an important concept to understand about a T, a T is a little bit asymmetric. We like asymmetry in EKG world. We don't like symmetry. And I'll, and I'll explain that more later, but this T is a little bit asymmetric. So that's good. And so there's, if you remember back in like way back in school, this was the absolute refractory. This was the relative refractory period, the end here. And if a PVC landed here, it could send someone into torsades. So that's a really important concept to understand. It's also why prolonged QT, why you also have more risk of torsades, because if this is a longer period and an impulse comes in here, then you're gonna send that patient into torsades. So Q waves, let's talk about that for a second. I actually, uh, I love Q waves. I mean, like nobody's business, but I know that there's a lot of confusion surrounding Q waves because the only thing you're really ever taught is that, oh, they mean old MI. But the thing is, is they don't always mean old, old MI. You can see Q waves in a pulmonary embolus. You can see Q waves that are normal if they're small, if they're in lead three and don't meet criteria. You can see Q waves in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, right? The thing that can kill all these young athletes. So they're not just old MI, but nobody ever tells you the full story. But I will tell you this. I will tell you that the way to know if they're bad or pathologic, is, which is what I have up here, is if they are a third the height of the R wave. Now, some textbooks will tell you a quarter. I'm fine with a quarter or a third, but this is what I do. I literally take my complex, I go like that, and then I draw and I carve it up into thirds. And I'm like, okay, well, yep, this is the third the height of the R wave it is there for pathologic or if it's 30 milliseconds wide. Either way, it is bad or pathologic. So that's the skinny on the cube. This is what they look like in real life. This is not the greatest copy of an EKG I've ever shown, but um, I just, I really liked how prominent they were. You could see that this guy, he's a third the height. There's also a tiny one in AVF. So three in AVF. And they're, these are called contiguous leads, which is a term that means that they are fed by the same artery, contiguous. So like you can see two, three and ABF are all contiguous. They're all fed by the right coronary artery. And so this is showing us that there could be an old MI, which is why the machine is saying 
age undetermined. That's the machine's cop out saying, hey, I don't know what it would happen because if it happened within the first hour of an MI, the machine would not want the liability for that. So at any rate, what are you going to do? You're going to worry about it. You're going to check back for old EKGs. You're going to compare. And if they have chest pain, then you're going to do something about it. But anyway, that's what they look like on the EKG. Now, another thing about T waves before we leave the waves um, is that understanding that there are some, some bad guys that need to stay in T wave jail. So this is a normal one right here, okay? And this T wave, he's a little big and there's some ST segment elevation. So what we can, we can say that about him, but we would actually need more info. We would need a 12 lead, but this is most likely gonna be either benign repolar polarization or pericarditis. So that may or may not need to stay in jail. This one here has some asymmetry and it's not completely symmetric, which is why it gets off the hook. This is gonna be what you see when you have left ventricular hypertrophy. Um, this is from a thick ventricle. And a lot of times this is caused by uncontrolled blood pressure. I hope you can see what I'm writing on the screen. I'm, I'm typing, typing and talking, thick ventricle, okay. And then you've got this guy here. Now he's too tall. Um, so we'd worry about hyper K with him and vice versa. This one's too tall or too small. So we would worry about hypo K. So this makes perfect sense when you see that this is um, really big, right? So anyway, uh, let's clear the screen and go to the next slide. All right, so I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this EKG? Um, just let's just, just test your chops for a minute. Um, do you think that this is a normal EKG? And do you notice anything, since we just talked about the P waves, do you notice anything about the P waves? Is there anything that you guys notice? Okay, inverted P. Are you talking? I think you're talking about up in AVR, probably. Um, peaked. Okay, something is peaked. What are um? What are we talking about that might be peaked? Are you talking? Oh, you're talking about the T waves up here and maybe AVR. But the T waves. Let's talk about the ones in V four, V five, and V six. V4, V5, and V6. How would you describe? Yes, they're symmetrical. That's a problem, right? Symmetric and inverted. Because remember, these guys, AVR and V1, are the only ones that are allowed to be inverted. So does anybody have any idea what that could mean? What could that mean? Okay, yes, good. Um, Michelle, I'm tagging you on some something really quick um, in Facebook. Okay, let me get back into our chat here. So yeah, ischemia is the most likely reason, but there are other reasons. PE is one of them. Um, you can also see this with a head bleed, believe it or not. But this patient had the last reason. This patient had cardiomyopathy. And cardiomyopathy, this was a very weird form of cardiomyopathy, which was an enlargement of the heart. She actually, it was very significant. She had, um, oh yeah, MI with Q waves have a worse mortality than Q wave MIs. Exactly. David's still here with us, our Mandalorian. Yes. So it could, so we worry about ischemia with the, these T waves like this. And, um, but this patient did have um, cardiomyopathy. And it's actually a form of hokum, and she was very much at risk for sudden death. So this EKG basically does not, her T waves are not following any of the rules. You've got inverted symmetric here, 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 here. So talking about T waves, the only T waves that were behaving were the ones in AVL and V2. So here we are just pointing them out. Know that the T waves matter, can tell you a lot of things if you know what to look for. So just remember, AVR and V1 should be inverted. Everybody else should be upright. We may refer to this as widespread T-wave inversion without ST elevation. Exactly, David. So 
If you ever want to know the answer, just watch David's answers in the chat. Um, epic, epic, epic. Okay. So another really good thing to know is the R to R interval because in order to determine a rhythm, you need to know if the rhythm is regular. So you're going to use the distance between the R to R to see if something is regular. And if it has varying R, R to R, then it's probably irregular. And that's going to steer you down a different pathway to find out the arrhythmia, which we'll talk more about tomorrow. But let's see if we can name the segments. The segments are here. And you can see this segment here. What would you guys call this? I'm going to open my chat. So tell me in the chat what you think. This segment here, what is this called? This one is called the PR. Good job. Nice. What about this one up here? This is called the URS. Yes. Julie is on top of things today. Um, this segment down here, this is the beginning of the Q to the end of the T. Yes, good job. I'm seeing your answers on FB and also in the chat on Zoom. And this one is, the segment is what? The most important one, I think, on the EKG. This one right here, ST. Good job. What do we worry about in the ST segment? Like, what are we always looking for there in the ST? We're always looking for... ST segment elevation or depression. Good job. Yay. Good. Exactly. All right. Now, this is an example of um, a really important point that also needs to be addressed in the fundamentals, which is that these numbers are all kind of important. And we do like a deep dive on this in the 30 day, but I do want to just take one second to A, point out that the Q, so the QT we'll just talk about real quick, should be it should be less than 460. This QTC is 713. Okay, we're always using the QTC. We're not using the QT. Okay, so if this is true, then that's the longest QT I've ever seen in my life. And so, um, yeah, the QTC is a bit high, Marcia says, exactly. But here's the thing. You can't trust these intervals if there's artifact. And exactly, <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> yeah, good. And the artifact that KJ is pointing out is tricking the machine. So if there's artifact, you can't trust this read. But here's how I knew it wasn't true. What you do is you go along and you find a T wave. So you can see a T wave here. You can see the R to R here. And I would just measure the R to R. And if your T wave, let me grab a different color let's do blue, is not halfway between the R to R, it's not yet 500. And that's just a little way to double check yourself and to know that this is not real. Because if it was real, you'd probably panic. When I got this handed to me, I panicked for like, well, actually I didn't panic. I was excited uh, because it was the longest I'd ever seen. And I thought, oh, this is going to be so great. But then we repeated it. And you can see that without the artifact, it was 444, so that's normal. <laughs> and so artifact makes a difference. So don't um, don't listen to the machine. And as David said, a lot of artifact plus low voltage T waves are confusing the computer. So it's true. The, the computer is not the end all be all. And you know, my strategy when I first started was I'm going to, well, computers are smarter than I am. I'm going to just listen to the computer and whatever it says, I'm going to just base my treatment on that. Well, that strategy had to go out the window pretty quickly because if we believe this, there would be egg on our face if we didn't repeat the EKG, right? So this is my dog, Remy. Um, he wants to just really drive home the fact that those numbers we just looked at matter. And it's not just the QT, it's all these numbers. So the PR interval, for example, can give us clues. Um, the computer is only as smart as the person programming it. Actually, um, David and I have a theory that uh, plaintiff attorneys program the software, uh, somebody other than who wants the provider to win, right? Who wants to set the provider up to win programs and machine software. So don't believe it, but these numbers, right? So the PR interval can be a clue. Like if you had a short one, for example, you could be dealing with a Wolf Parkinson's white. If you have a long one, 
you could be dealing with a first degree block. So there are lots of clues in these numbers. So it's important to know the normal reference ranges. So Remy says, please, um, please really uh, know these numbers. So Marcia says we have different values for male and female. Yeah, that's true, Marcia. Um, for males, it's 450 milliseconds. And for females, it's 460. So my, my brain um, is, I just use 460 because I don't want to remember more numbers. Because technically, what are you really going to do between 450 and 460 for somebody? You're really not going to do much at, different as far as medicines so or anything, really. So because of that, I just remember one number, which is 460. But you're absolutely right. And it is everywhere, not just your facility. Um, but that's a very good point. So, um, all right. Let's talk about a case that again, to show that the intervals matter. So as Remy just mentioned to us, this was a, a real case where um, there was a 51-year-old female. She had general weakness and she felt like the water ran out of her. She was under a lot of stress. She had a lot of chronic neck pain. Some boxes fell on her head and crushed some vertebrae. So she had lots of surgeries. So she was on methadone for her pain, but she had unfortunately had a really bad pain day. So she took two methadone and then drank some alcohol and did some cocaine to try and uh, escape her pain. So not surprisingly, soon after that, EMS was summoned. Uh, they arrived on scene. They noticed that she was incontinent. And that's a clue because if she's incontinent, it means she lost consciousness at some point and, and or had a seizure. So that's kind of, we always look for in the ER or on, on the ambulances, it was someone incontinent because that tells us a lot. Unless they're just, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol and sitting in their chair and they can't get up or whatever, or, you know, they have bladder issues, but generally it's a bad sign. So she gets, uh, they get her and they're about load her on the gurney and they lay her down and she goes into torsades. So they end up getting the paddles. They shock her at 200 joules and she regains this rhythm. And this is her presenting EKG door time. Okay. So if you were to see um, this EKG, after a cardiac arrest, yes, Matt says, check out the QTC. Okay, so I literally didn't put it on there. And that is why she went into cardiac arrest. But I wanted us to be able to practice looking at the R to R going on over and making our line down the middle. And you can see that it is about halfway. So yeah, look how long the QTC, David said. Exactly. And you can visually see it. Um, it was, I think, 512, if I'm not mistaken, and 512, 520. But at any rate, she definitely is going to get a workup um, status post-cardiac arrest. She ended up going home with a defibrillator. And yes, QTC methadone, good connection there, KJ. So it turns out that you have more risk of going into torsades if you're female, if you're hypokalemic, if you're on multiple QT prolonging medications, which she was on multiple. Um, and methadone is a big player. So it was no surprise this happened. And she had had a history of low potassium previously that she didn't correct. And here's why. She said, those pills are too big. I couldn't swallow them. But she didn't tell her provider. She just didn't take them. It happens all the time. So she kind of was, was a recipe for this to happen. When they got her off all her QT prolonging medications and she came into the clinic, she was now down to a QTC of 441, which was much improved and didn't have many issues after that because she avoided the QT prolongers and took her potassium. So that was a happy ending. So, so far, can you see the power in knowing that we are gonna be teaching you more stuff tomorrow and the next day, but knowing that, as you can see, we have a very supportive community. We make this easy to digest. We don't make this hard and um, yeah, you, you knowing these numbers, knowing these, these terms is really going to help you. So I want to know which thing you're most excited about that you learned tonight. So type in the chat, what are you most excited about? Um, and also I, I do want to mention that, um, I want to show you a little bit about tomorrow really quickly to get you excited. So we're going to do a little sneak peek. So we're going to talk about arrhythmias tomorrow. And we're going to talk about, um, the three questions to ask. So I'll be bringing this back. Don't worry. We're going to talk about this graphic, which is going to show you conduction. I'm so excited for that. And we're going to talk about these rhythms. So we'll be doing that. 
And we're gonna wrap up tonight with doing our workbook really quick, and then I'll be giving away a prize. Okay, yeah, reviewing the waves, things that affect the QT. All right, awesome, yeah, we're, we have, tomorrow's gonna be exciting. We're also gonna have some uh, dynamic arrhythmias coming up on the screen for you as well, which is gonna be exciting. But this is your workbook, so hopefully you have it printed out. And if you do, we're gonna run through the answers real quick so that we can get a little practice in. Um, it's a, definitely a good review. So everything we learned tonight, let's talk about it. The P wave, it's always gonna be as a response that from the atrial contraction. Okay, so right here, you're gonna write atrial contraction, okay? Looks like you're putting it in the chat already. Hey, Maddie. All right, you guys are awesome. The Q wave is initially a negative or positive? Yeah, go Maddie, right? Go Maddie. Okay, so um, upward. So a Q wave is initially, I'm, I'm doing the sign for you. The Q is initially a, yes, negative deflection, downward deflection. Good job, Maddie. And it is normal if it's less than what of the height of the R wave? Yes, the Q is negative, good. Okay, it is normal if it's less than a third. Some, some say a quarter, that's not wrong. A quarter to a third, we'll just, we'll just say that and we'll both be right because either multiple textbooks will tell you different things. Um, good job, you guys. Look, Star Kelly and Marsha is on here with us. Snarfly, haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, okay, so then the, the QRS um, represents the ventricles depolarizing and the R wave is a positive wave, right? When it goes upward, it's positive. So you can put that there. Um, this is the first, all right, it's downward deflection. Oh, so it's the first positive deflection. The T wave should be, now this, this isn't one where we could say anything. We could say the T wave should be asymmetric or normal size that I could put, I could put any version of that in here. And it should be upright in all leads except for which ones? You guys got this? Type it in the chat. Oh, KJ, fastest typist. AVR and V1. Exactly. Okay. Now, the U wave, um, it's a small rounded deflection, sometimes seen after what wave? What are we going to put here? Yes, good. The T wave. And we talked about a cause of hypokalemia causing the U's. We already talked about that. You guys are rock stars here on Facebook as well. Um, lots of new faces. I'm loving this. And you guys are all interacting, which is so fun. The Delta wave, we didn't talk about this one much. We just briefly mentioned it, but it'll have a short PR interval. And you'll see this associated with what process, what bad thing, what bad thing, WPW, exactly. Wolf Parkinson's white. Good. Okay. That's the clues, right? And you're measuring the PR from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the R. And it should be between what number and what number? What's the normal? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so fun watching the chat. I'm loving it. Um, the normal should be from, good, 120 to 200. Good, 120 to 200 or 0.12 to 0.20. Sorry, my nose is a chink. Um, all right, so uh, let's see. I think the next one is PR. So basically the beginning of the P to the beginning of the R. And then the ST segment is where we look for two things. We talked about this earlier. We look for elevation and depression, right? Elevation and depression. So you can write those in. And then um, good job, good job, good job. I'm seeing this on Facebook and Zoom. And then the ST segment is, uh, we talked about that, ST depression, right? There's reasons. So um, what are some of the reasons? Cardiac ischemia is one reason. And also medications such as digoxin. And also sometimes hypokalemia can cause um, depression. Okay, so those are the three things. So hypo, cardiac ischemia, and dig. So 
Um, all right, let's talk about the QT. It can lead to what bad thing? What bad thing? Good job, Fahad. Um, Torsades, yes. <laughs> Tor Toradas, I know what you meant, KJ. Totally know what you meant. You're the fastest typer and I know what you meant. And then the R to R, we use this to see if a rhythm is regular or irregular. Okay, so this is a big thank you for being here tonight, but it's, we're not done because I do want to give away our prize for tonight. Um, tomorrow will be a little bit shorter as well as day three will be a little bit shorter. This is just the first night, so we have to get to know each other. But um, so far, I just want to say that I'm seeing the interaction and I'm seeing that you guys are encouraging each other. Um, I want to see more of it, though, tomorrow because I want to be able to pick my winner of the scholarship to the 30 day EKG challenge. But tonight's prize is this. We're gonna have prizes each night. Did I mention that? I don't think I mentioned that. So this is the prize that I'm gonna be mailing out to somebody who wins. We're gonna announce the winner tomorrow. If you wanna win this prize, this is the EKG workshop kit. What you're gonna do is you're going to put hashtag and you're gonna put it in, try to put it in Facebook for me, hashtag 30 day. Okay, hashtag 30 day, if you wanna win this. And yes, this prize is very cool. Let me show you what's inside. So first of all, I painted the cover, which um, I don't know, it was just really fun. So it's like even more special. Speaking of paintings, it also comes with a little mini painting. And so every 30 day, I actually paint uh, new paintings for our students. In fact, you can tell today I was doing that before I came on. And so this just can go on your desk and be totally cute and remind you of how supportive this group is and how you are gonna be good at EKGs. I send you some crayons. Um, this is also the box that you get when you join the 30 day EKG. So if you're wondering, we give you red, green, and blue because we color code the EKGs, but you're gonna also get one of these. Oh my gosh, what is this? It's called an RCAT window, RCAT window. And this is um, actually, he sells these I think for $15 on Amazon. You're gonna get it for free. And this has um, a red line that helps you look for ST elevation. So that's coming in your box. You're also, oh, I'm seeing all these hashtag 30 days. I'm loving it. Keep them coming. Um, this is the workbook that we send you with 17 real EKGs in here. So here's just one example of one of the EKGs. That's number four. And they're all real. So they're not like perfect ones out of the classroom or the textbook where, you know, they actually have like, artifact and stuff sometimes, you know, like real life. And then we send you this, this is all coming in your box. It's still coming from the box. We send you this, this is what you color code. This is what you can practice on as your normal EKG. And then there is a uh, cheat sheet in here with all my secrets, but I'm not gonna share that with you because it has all my secrets, my trade secrets. And then there's this that shows you how to use that tool that I'm sending you. So all that's coming in your box. So one of you lucky winners will be announced tomorrow and I will put this in the mail for you and you will get to enjoy. But speaking of enjoying, I've enjoyed and I know Michelle has too, hanging out with you tonight. Uh, and Matt and KJ, I don't know if you noticed, but Matt and KJ are um, probably our other biggest cheerleaders in this group. Um, <laughs> KJ likes the painting on the shelf. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, this was one that was the blue one above me, KJ. That was one of my first paintings I ever made, actually. So that's why it's there. But um, does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Same Zoom link, 5:30 Pacific. We'll be doing about 45 minutes tomorrow. And um, the workbook, if you still need it, please let us know. We'll get it to you. And uh the answers are gonna be in the guides if you want to look at the answers again um in day one. The recording will be moved to day one as well. And then we will put together a special link that'll be available tomorrow that'll have, we'll be putting all the replays on them so you can watch them outside of Facebook, which will be nice. And yeah, that's it. So thank you so much, you guys. It's been an honor. Um, you did it, Alice. I see it here. So you're good um, for, for entering in the drawing and I'll announce the winner tomorrow and we'll give away more prizes uh, tomorrow night. I have them over there. I don't want to show you. I want to give this prize. All right. So Michelle, any final thoughts, any final words for these um, wonderful people that have been with us tonight? No, just if you have any other questions, put it in the chat. So, or if there's something in particular that you want to like 
really learn, pop it in, pop it in the chat so we can put that on our list. Exactly. That's a good, yeah. So we like to customize these to you. So um, Michelle is big and she will probably, if you type something in, it'll probably go in her game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hesitate. So, oh, I think KJ is talking about Skelly. So oh, do yeah. you want to show everybody Skelly? It's just really cute. Yeah. Skelly is, I have lots of video or visuals behind me, but Skelly has the um, EKGs on him. He has the electrodes already on him so we can do correct placement when we're learning. And he has a cute little shirt on that I've embroidered. Yeah, it's got a little zebra on, but it's got the things on it. And he sits there so we can remember where things are, where the leads are supposed to go. Yeah. So if you're ever wondering, like, are Michelle's classes fun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are very fun. So, um, okay, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, yeah, ask all the questions one step at a time. I love it. It's perfect. See you tomorrow and have a good night. Bye, guys.